This was not on my bingo card when I woke up yesterday morning, but there is now AI inside of our Notion workspaces. Yesterday, Notion announced the launch of Notion AI, which is a currently alpha program that adds text generation and other AI magic into your Notion workspace. And in this video, I'm gonna give you 10 examples of what it can do from translating text to other languages, to outlining blog posts, writing pros and cons lists, to even writing working programming code based on a text prompt that you give it. But let's just jump right in to what this can do. I'll give you more details about the wait list and the costs and privacy things later on, but I want to show you exactly what it can do. So here I've got a page in my Notion workspace called AI Playground. And now that I have the AI assist features on for my account, I now have a few different AI archetypes on this new page here. And I can even click more and see other archetypes that I can use to basically like, I guess, set the mode of the AI for the prompt that I'm going to write. So the first example I'm gonna give you here is outlining a blog post. And right now my team is actually working on a bit of a GTD getting things done tutorial for the main channel. So let's type in uh, what is GTD and how can I use it? And let's see just how good of a blog post outline AI can give us here. So what is GTD and how can I use it? There's our H1. GTD or getting things done is a popular productivity method that helps you organize your tasks and get them done more efficiently. Created by David Allen, that is correct. And let's see if it gets the steps correct. So we have the collect step, we have the process step, we have organize. It does seem to have created a pretty decent outline for a blog post. So pretty interesting example. The next one I wanna show you is how it can generate lists. And while I'm getting that ready, I do wanna mention that if you are new to this channel, this is a completely Notion focused channel. So if you are new to Notion or you wanna get deeper into it and learn how to become a power user, definitely subscribe. I've got database tutorials, I've got formula documentation. So make sure you're subscribed if you aren't. Okay, so I'm gonna come down to one of these other archetypes and let's use to-do list here but I'm actually not going to give it a to-do list prompt. I wanna give it just a different prompt. So let's let's see what happens if I tell it to give me a list of games. So give me a list of the 10 best uh, Super Nintendo games. And if Super Mario Brothers 3 is not on there, then that'll be correct, because that's an NES game <laughs> of all time. And let's see what it gives us here. All right, we got Super Mario World, we got Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past, we got Super Metroid, Chrono Trigger. And this was interesting to me because as somebody who likes to make listicle videos or likes to just be you know, very uh, comprehensive with topics that I'm covering, my immediate thought with this list generation tool here is can I use this to basically generate lists of things that I might not know about regarding a topic. Okay, on to example number three. I want to show you how the AI can actually generate comparison tables. So let's create a page for that, call it a table. And we could do this pros and cons list, but I found that normally this just creates like a bullet list of things. So I'm going to do an empty page and then I'm going to do slash help me write. And this you will notice is a change to the block menu. If I scroll down, I have all the blocks that I normally have, but at the top, I have all my AI assist options and I can go to more for all these archetypes as well. Um, so we're gonna do help me write and then I'm gonna do a comparison table. So I'm gonna tell it to create a table actually, comparing, let's do uh, mountain bikes, road bikes, and I wanna see if I can get an additional column out of it. So let's do uh, unicycles as well. <laughs> Clearly the best option if you are a clown. Uh, okay, so yeah, we get suspension, no on road, no on unicycle, that is correct. I wonder if there's like unicycles with suspension and if people who do like downhill off-road unicycling. Uh, so yeah, you can actually generate a table with the AI and uh, I wonder what happens if we try again, if we're gonna get more detail here. Let's see. That time I actually didn't even create a table. So it does look like this is not an exact science. Oh, here we go. The third time I tried it, I did get more detail. I think I got fewer rows, but more detail per row. And that's actually gonna lead me to the fourth example I wanna go through in this video because there is a continue writing option which can add even more detail here. So the first little, I guess, sub example of that feature is, I'll just see what happens if I hit continue writing for this table here. And it looks like, yeah, I've got a new sentence about this table here and it looks like it adds a bit more detail than was in the table earlier. Okay, so let's go on to our fifth example here where we are going to fix some poor grammar and spelling. And I'm gonna need an example of poor grammar and spelling. So let's create a brand new page for that. And oh, <laughs> actually, I like that better. Let's leave that there. And let's say I've had one too many before I filmed videos this morning. So I type a sentence like this. All right, we're keeping the ER here. I is the bst, spell R, 
in the world. So now if I highlight this, and I'll show you two tricks here. If I highlight it, I now have this AI assist little context menu. Now I've got a few different options in here, fix spelling and grammar, summarize and translate. I'll show you these in a few minutes. But also, I can access the AI Assist menu from the block menu here, and I can do the exact same thing. So let's see what happens if I fix spelling and grammar for this sentence. I'm the best speller in this world, and I'm also very good at grammar with an AR. So that's pretty good, and we have a few different options here. We can try again if we don't like this, uh, but we can also replace the badly spelled sentence, or we can insert it beneath which will keep our original, and sometimes you might actually wanna do that. Okay, example number six is gonna be translations, and we're gonna do something here called translation round tripping. So I'll create a page, let's call it that. And essentially, we're gonna have the AI translate a sentence into multiple different languages, and then from the final one, we'll go back to English. And I'm gonna do it this way because I personally do not speak anything other than English, and I guess, kind of JavaScript at this point. And I wanna see just how good it is at translating a sentence into multiple languages and then back to English. So give me a second, I'll type up a sentence here. All right, so now I have a sentence here. If I highlight it just like before, I can go to our little AI Assist menu and now I can translate it to any of these languages. So let's first go to Japanese and see what it gives us here. Like I said before, I cannot read any of this. Uh, for a while, back like 10 years ago, I actually was able to read um, katakana and hiragana, but all this kanji can't read it at all. So let's go with insert, so we keep our original sentence, and now let's send this to, uh, let's do Spanish, and we'll do maybe five languages total, or maybe four, and then English will be the last one. So we'll insert there, and then let's round trip that one, or I guess translate that one to German, just picking these at random here. Uh, let me know if you speak Japanese or what was this one, Spanish or German, if these are correct. But the one I am very interested in now is what happens when we basically send this back to English. So my name is Thomas Frank and I like weightlifting and programming computers. I have special skills that make me the worst nightmare of all clowns in the world. So yeah, I mean, it's not the exact same phrasing, but it's got all the same meaning and pretty much nothing is lost in translation, which is extremely impressive. So I'll go ahead and insert that and let's move on to our next example, which is going to be the one I'm super excited about, writing programming code. So let's call this one programming code. And something that I'm working on right now is getting information from a service called Poke API, which you can find over at pokeapi.co. And I'm using this as the basis for a Notion API tutorial, which we are actually editing right now, will be out next week. So I wanna see, can Notion AI write code that will pull information about a Pokemon? And can we actually run that code? So I have an instance of a glitch project. This is basically an online programming environment where you can write code and then actually run it. So I'm gonna delete everything that's here and we're going to write a prompt inside of Notion and see just what we can get. Um, so I know that I want to make a call to the Pokemon API. I wanna get information about, let's say five different Pokemon and then I want it to output the name uh, the weight and the height of that Pokemon in the terminal. So let's do help me write. And I know this works because I've tested it before, but we're gonna go through the prompt writing process uh, together so you can see how I'm actually thinking through things. So one thing that I will mention up front is you have to be a little bit specific with what you want it to do, because if you're very vague, it may not give you code that's actually gonna work. So for example, if I write, um, give me JavaScript code that gets information about Charizard. In my experience, this is too broad and I might actually get something here, but this is like literally just getting information about Charizard, which means that the AI models data set actually has information about Pokemon, but this isn't what I want. I want actual JavaScript code that is gonna be able to make this API call. So once again, help me write is what I'm gonna use here and let's get a bit more specific here. In JavaScript, first thing I'm gonna do is actually require uh, an API calling library, and I'm gonna use Axios. So let's just say define a constant Axios and set its value to require Axios. And I found that this is the only bit of like actual kind of coding I have to do. The rest of it I can literally type out in plain English. So uh, the next thing I wanna do is create a function. And because we're using Axios, I do know it has to be asynchronous. Don't worry if you don't know anything about that. I'm just going to say create an asynchronous function, and then inside it, create a for loop. And I basically want to create a loop that will call the Poke API five times so I can get information about the first five Pokemon. So I'm gonna say create a for loop uh, with an initial value, 
of one and a max value of five inside that loop. Use Axios to call the Poke API and get information about the Pokemon whose number corresponds to the value of i. So what this should do is basically call the Poke API for whatever the current number in the loop is, which is pretty sweet. And then uh, finally, we'll say um, console log that Pokemon's species dot name value, its height and its weight, run the function. And I want this to be outputted in a code block so it's formatted correctly and so I can easily copy and paste it into Glitch. So uh, this is a really useful trick here. I can actually say start with, and then in quotes, I'll do three back ticks and end with, same thing, quotes, three back ticks. I'm gonna copy this to my clipboard just in case I lose it, but let's go ahead and generate and see what it gives us. And look at that. So I'm not gonna go through what this code does, but I'm looking at it right now and I'm fairly certain that it is going to work. So let's go ahead and copy it and we'll go back over to Glitch and we're gonna paste it in our little area here. And now I'm gonna open the terminal and let's do a full page terminal actually. So I'll clear this and if I run node index.js, it's basically going to run the code that we have on this page here. And if it is uh, correctly written, we should get information about the first five Pokemon. So let's see what happened. And there it is. Bulbasaur, height 7, weight 69. Ivasaur, height 10, weight 130. This is amazing. I mean, I can literally, in plain English, tell it what I want. And as long as I have a decent understanding of the structure of the code, it's going to create the actual code with the correct syntax for me. Uh, and that is going to bring me on to, I believe, example number eight, which is the most finicky one, but it does work sometimes. And that's solving math equations. So we'll create us a page for math equations. And if you give it a very simple math equation, it's going to do just fine. So if I do two plus five times eight, this is fairly simple. So let's do what is. This should work. Let's just see for a second. Two plus five times eight is 42. So that's correct. But I have found in my testing that if you give it more complex problems, it doesn't always know the answer and it won't tell you that it doesn't know the answer. It'll just very confidently output like the wrong answer. So I guess right now the AI model is a uh, proud member of the subreddit confidently incorrect. And let me give you an example of that. So let's do help me write. And I'm gonna do uh, what is the, let's do surface area of a sphere with radius, uh, let's do a radius of 20. And we'll generate this and then we're gonna check it against Wolfram Alpha here. So surface area of a sphere with radius 20 is uh, 1,256 square units. So let's go over to Wolfram Alpha and type in the exact same prompt. Let me zoom in a little bit here first so you can see what I'm doing. And then we'll type in surface area. All right, and Wolfram Alpha is never wrong. So our result is 5,026.55 or 1,600 times pi, which is not 1,256. Now, one thing that Notion's CTO actually told me is that the prompt engine can often be more accurate if you tell it, let's think in steps. So let's see what happens if I tell it, let's think in steps. It may not be correct on this run, but it should actually give me the steps that it's gonna be using. Here we go, okay. Plugging the values we get, um, we got the actual answer here. So it does seem that if you tell it to think in steps, you are gonna get a more accurate answer and you can go even further than that. So let's do it one more time. I'm gonna do surface area of a sphere with radius 20. Let's do what is because this is Jeopardy today. I'll do let's think in steps and format the answer as a list. So this is an example of additional information you can provide to the prompt to get it to output the way you want. And we should get, yep, there it is, bullet list answers, which are much easier to read. Though, once again, we got this answer that doesn't really match up to the answer we're getting here. Uh, and I'm not quite sure if this is a correct answer that is just expressed in a different way. I'll do a try again here just to see or if it is actually wrong. But I guess my conclusion here is sometimes you are going to get the right answer. Uh, the more complex the problem, the less reliable the answer is going to be. Okay, let's go on to our next example, which will be summarizing long bits of text. And I am going to pull some text from one of my blog posts and let's just copy this entire how memory works 
subsection of the article here. So I'm gonna bring this into Notion, call this memory, and at the bottom of this, we can type slash summarize. And we should get a summary of the entire article right here. So we have brain as three types of memory processes, sensory, working memory, long-term. And yeah, it's got a pretty decent three to four sentence summary of the entire article. But what's even cooler, what's even cooler, is we can summarize specific sections of our text as well. So right now we've got a summary of the entire article. What if I just want a summary of long-term memory? Well, I can select that text and in this AI assist area, I can summarize just this selection and I can get a summary specifically on long-term memory. So I'll go ahead and insert right there. That's my summary. And that my friends is really cool. And that is actually going to bring us over to our final example which is on my list here, and that's going to be getting answers to questions that you have directly inside a Notion. Um, so this is kind of like a more of a, maybe a novelty example, but let's just call this one, um, I don't know, Oracle. And we can now use the AI assistant to get information that we don't really have right now. So for example, what if I write something like, uh, who won the 2018 US Open uh, men's division? And this should be Novak, so let's see if it gets it right. Oh, and it actually gives us quite a bit more information than I was expecting, but this is another good example of what you can do with these AI generation tools. If you are, you know, in your workflow, you're writing stuff and you're like, I don't know the answer to this question. You could always go over to Google, you could search it up, but it looks like you could also get pretty decent information directly from Notion AI. And that means you can stay in the same context. You can stay in Notion. You can keep doing your writing workflow. And if you need to, you can go verify information later, but this is a great way to pull information in on the fly, uh, again, without leaving Notion. Uh, let's go through a few of the different FAQs and questions you might have about Notion AI. So right now, again, this is an alpha. So there is a wait list. Uh, apparently the wait list is pretty long right now, but if you wanna get access to it, I would recommend getting on that wait list sooner rather than later. Uh, and at the bottom of this page, which I will have linked in the description down below, there is an FAQ. So a few of the questions that I had, number one is it's gonna cost money. Right now they say that it is free in alpha, but it's likely gonna cost extra in the future. That is not surprising to me, given that I believe they are using OpenAI's GPT-3, and that is not an open source uh, machine learning algorithm, and it costs money for them to use the API. So. So definitely makes sense, but hopefully it's going to be something that's not too expensive or maybe it's even rolled into paid plans and you just get like a certain amount of credits. That would be pretty cool. The other one I was specifically curious about myself is how is data going to be used? So I'll break that down really quickly. I actually talked to them directly about this. First and foremost, you actually have to opt in to use AI in the first place. I'll show you that really quick. If I go over to Notion, uh, say you get access to the feature, you would actually have to go to your settings and members here. And then in the upgrade or plans area, there is currently this add-on for Notion AI. So you actually have to turn it on manually if you want it to work in your workspace. And even once you do, they do state that uh, they don't allow third parties or partners to use data for training their models for any other purpose. And also, they will not use your data to train their own models unless you give them express permission to do so. I was specifically looking for that when I got access to this feature, so I'm very glad to see it. And there are program terms. Again, you can uh, check this page out in the description down below if you are curious about any of the other FAQs here. So that is about gonna do it for this little first look video. Hopefully you found this interesting. Let me know in the comments below or over on Twitter at Tom Frankly if you have any other questions about this or Notion in general. And if you wanna learn Notion, if you are a Notion beginner or you're looking to uh, level up your skills, become a Notion power user, definitely go over to thomasjfrank.com slash fundamentals. That's where you're gonna find my completely open, free, and uh, comprehensive Notion beginners course that will take you from the complete basics of you know making new pages and writing text to more advanced things like page layout and linking pages and even Notion databases. The Notion databases lesson in particular is extremely comprehensive, goes through filters and relations and templates and formulas, all kinds of good stuff. And if you want to go even further at notionformulaguide.com, I have complete documentation. It took me four months of my life this year to write this up. Uh, complete documentation on every aspect of Notion formulas. Literally every function, operator, and constant has a page with their syntax and example formulas and even an example database where you can see all the formulas working uh, in action. And if you want to make sure you never miss anything that I publish about Notion, any of these kind of cool guides or new templates I'm creating, 
you can go over to my website, thomasjfrank.com, and in the Learn Notion area up here in the header, there's a newsletter link. And you can get on my Notion Tips newsletter to get infrequent updates about new templates that I'm working on, new tutorial releases, and lots of other cool stuff. So join that if you like. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at Tom Frankly if you want to interact with me there. And I'll see you in the next video.